Hey guys, welcome to our virtual children's church. The first thing that I want to tell you guys, so make sure your parents are around because you might need some help for this. Um, if you want to take notes like we have done in the past with children's church, you'll find that and your activity sheet linked in the description or in the comments below on this video. So, like we normally start, we're going to go ahead and review our lessons from the past few weeks. So if this is your first time or if you haven't been to Children's Church in the past few weeks, we're talking about the life of Moses. So Moses was an Israelite, and so the Israelites were the Egyptian slaves. And so they had a rule that any of the boys that were born were to be killed because the Pharaoh, the leader of the Egyptians, did not want any of the Israelites to come up and attack them or anything. So all the boys were being killed. Well, Moses' mother, who has a really hard name to pronounce, so I'm not even going to try to do that right now, had Moses. And so Moses' mother was afraid to kill him. So she put him in a basket and sent him down the river. And his sister Miriam watched out for him. Well, Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, found Moses in the water, and so she adopted him and raised him. But she also allowed an Israelite woman to take care of it, which ended up being Moses' mom. So God works things out pretty cool. So Moses was able to grow up as a prince, and at one point he saw the Egyptians, kind of like in this picture, how they're beating the slaves. He saw that happening to a slave, and so he killed the Egyptian that was doing that. And so that caused him to have to run away to Midian. Moses got older, and God called him at this time and told him that he was going to rescue his people. And so we see this bush right here. And so this bush was on fire, but it wasn't getting burned up. And God spoke to him through this bush. And so he gave Moses three signs um, that he was God and that he was going to protect him the way he said he would. He took Moses' staff and turned it into a snake. He also told Moses to put his hand in his pocket and take it out. And he had leprosy, which we've talked about as that awful skin disease where their skin's just falling off and it's super icky and you're contagious. You can't get around other people. And then he also had him put his hand back in his pocket. And when he brought it out, he was healed. And lastly, he turned water into blood. So these were the signs that God gave Moses that he was going to take care of him. Moses had a bad stutter, so he was not able to, he didn't feel like he had the ability to speak. But God's like, I've got you through all of this. So, Moses went to Pharaoh and told him to let my people go. And Pharaoh was like, no, these are my slaves. Why would I do that? I'm getting free labor. So, God sent these different plagues to Egypt. And we'll just go over these super quick. They turned the water to blood, which caused all the fish to die. And frogs, lice, flies, sick animals, boils, which are those awful skin bumps, and then they had thunder, fire, and hail, locust, and darkness. And Pharaoh would not let the people go. The tenth and final plague, though, which we call the Passover, was where God killed the firstborn son of any family that did not have a sacrifice to God. So they were told to eat the man or the bread that we talked about that was unleavened. They had the bitter herbs. And then they had the lamb, and they sacrificed the lamb, they put the blood on the do doorpost, and they had their meal inside. And during that night, God passed over, and anyone that had not honored him by doing the sacrifice, their firstborn son was killed. So this even included Pharaoh's son. We can relate this story also to Jesus and how he's the lamb of God and how he is the perfect sacrifice for us. So through this, like I said, Pharaoh's son was killed. And so Pharaoh was very upset, and he said, get out of here. And God told the people, before you leave, take some of the Egyptians' possessions. So like, they're like, give us your gold, give us your, all your different fabrics and different things like that. And they left. But then Pharaoh got upset in that process after he saw that all of his slaves were leaving, all of that free labor he had. So the Egyptians chased after them. And what did God do when they got up to the river and they couldn't get through? So um, Moses picked up his staff and the water split and the Israelites were able to walk over on dry land. And as soon as they got finished, the water came back down and killed all the Egyptians. 
So they knew God was a plague and they left them alone. While they were in the wilderness, God provided manna, water, and protection for the people. So manna was similar to the bread that they had, but this came from like the dew of the ground. So we talked about how the grass is wet in the morning, and so when that dried up, there was manna on the ground for them. And he also gave them quail. And you have to think of how many thousands of people this was. It wasn't just a couple quail walked up. Thousands of quail came, and they were able to eat that. And then God was able to provide water for them through a rock, which I think is really cool because that's not where we get our water from. And lastly, protection. And I have to see if I can remember the name. The Amalekites came after the people, and God protected them and said, Moses, as long as your arms are held up, you will be victorious. And so you can see we've got people holding his arms up to keep them victorious over the Amalekites. And last week's lesson was on the Ten Commandments. And so I wrote them out so I can make sure I tell them to you guys just right, too. So our Ten Commandments that were given to Moses by God were, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So put God first. Thou shalt not make any graven image or like an idol. So that's to worship only God. Thou shalt not take the name of God, thy God, in vain. So honor God with your words. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. So take time for God. I think this one's really cool because even though we can't have church together right now, we're still getting to have it together. So we're still honoring the Sabbath in our own special way. So, honor thy mother and father, or obey your parents. Thou shalt not kill, respect human life. Thou shalt not commit adultery, or obey God's um, design for marriage. Thou shalt not steal, respect other people's things. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, which means don't tell lies, tell the truth. And then thou shalt not covet, so be content with what you have. So that was our lesson for last week. So now we are caught up to where we are now. And we're going to learn about how God punishes idolatry. So this is our picture for today. And so most of us don't really like it when someone else takes credit for something that we said or did. And today we're going to see how the Israelites sinned against God by giving credit to what belonged to God to something else. <clears throat> So while Moses was receiving these important commands, the Ten Commandments from God, the Israelites got tired of waiting for him to come down from the top of the mountain. Moses was gone for 40 days. The people said they didn't know what happened to Moses. Was he dead? Was he not coming back? So we're going to read about what happened in Exodus 32. So I'm going to start with Exodus 32, verse 1. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So who did the Israelites say that brought them out of Egypt? They said Moses did. Was that true? Was it Moses who delivered Pharaoh from the ten, delivered them from Pharaoh and the ten plagues and parting of the Red Sea? No. It's true that Moses led the people, but it was God who rescued them with all the miracles. It's sad that the people forgot who their real deliverer was and instead gave Moses all the credit. Do you think that pleased God? No. So what else did the Israelites say to Aaron in verse 1? What did they want him to make? They asked for him to make gods which should go before them. They were pretty mixed up. First, they gave Moses credit for doing things that only God could do, and now they wanted Aaron to make an idol for them to go before them instead of God. So we talked about this in the past. This is our big G God and little g gods. Okay, so this big G God is what is God our Father, Creator, the one who is the true God who does everything for us. When we see little g God in the Bible, those are the created gods that people choose to worship that can be either idols or anything like that. That's not God. This is not of God. So this is what they were trying to create. They asked Aaron to make them some little g-gods to worship. And we know that didn't please God. So now we're going to go to um, still Exodus 32. We're going to read verses 2 through 4. 
So Aaron said to them, Take off your rings of gold that are in your ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. They re and he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. So what did Aaron do when, they asked, when he was asked to make these gods? He said, give me all your gold, we'll work on it. So he did what they asked, so they took off their gold earrings and they brought them to Aaron. And so after that, he made a molten calf. And a calf is a young cow, and he made this with a graving tool, so he like, carved it out. So, um, many of the people, like the Egyptians, worshipped bulls as a symbol of power. So the Israelites wanted a strong animal to worship instead of God. And what did the people say after the golden calf was made. These be thy gods, still little g-god, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So let's think about what's happening here. What are the people doing? They're making and worshiping an idol. They're giving the idol credit for bringing them out of Egypt. The Israelites picked up a lot of the sinful ways of the Egyptians while they lived there. They wanted to worship God the way the Egyptians worshiped their false gods by making an idol. This is directly against what God taught us in the Ten Commandments. So which of the Ten Commandments did they break? Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and thou shalt not make any graven image or bow down to them to serve them. So the Israelites already broke the first two commandments that God told them to follow. They weren't worshiping God. They were worshiping a created animal. They had made an animal out of gold, and they called it their god. This was foolish of them to think that something that Aaron made out of gold had the power to save them from Pharaoh, but that's what they said. God wasn't getting the worship and praise for all he had done for the Israelites. Instead, the people said that the golden calf that Aaron just made and brought them out of Egypt. So this was a terrible sin. Aaron tried to get the people back to worshiping God by building an altar and announcing a feast to the Lord. The next day, the people got up early and made sacrifices on the altar but they weren't worshiping God the, way, the right way. They ate and drank and celebrated the way that the um, false religions did that they did in Egypt. They were out of control. They were mixing up worship with God and with worship like they had learned in Egypt. So now, I showed you all your paper that you have access to online. So we're going to go ahead and start going over a couple of our questions. And if y'all bring these back, you can get some little extra goodies when we are able to meet together for church. So... Our first question, um, or it's fill in the blank. So Moses was on Mount Sinai with God when the Israelites were tired of waiting with him. So in our first blank, Sinai. You can find that in your Bible, and you can figure out the spelling for it. And if you get it right, once again, more goodies. So number two, Aaron used the Israelites' gold rings to make an idol of a golden calf. Number three, the Israelites broke God's commandments to worship him alone and not to make an idol. All right. So meanwhile, up on Mount Sinai with Moses, God knew what the people were doing. He told Moses they had already turned away from his commands and were worshiping this golden calf. God said the people were stubborn and rebellious and deserved to be punished for their sin. He said he would destroy the Israelites and start again with Moses. He would bless Moses and make him and his descendants into a great nation. But Moses loved the Israelite people, so he prayed for them. This was an important prayer because God was ready to just wipe them out. So Moses spoke with God and reminded him that the Israelites were his people whom he delivered from Egypt. He said that if God destroyed them, the Egyptians would think that he was evil and brought the Israelites out of Egypt just to kill them. Then Moses spoke the promise of God he gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Israel, that they would have many descendants who would live in the promised land. Those descendants were the same Israelites God wanted to wipe out because of their sin. Moses pleaded with God to turn from his anger and not to punish the people as they deserved. God listened to Moses and did not destroy the, uh, the Israelites. So what it, um, attribute of God was shown here? That he was merciful? So he could have just chosen to punish the Israelites by destroying them all, but he showed mercy instead. So, back to our little notes. And number four, God was going to destroy the Israelites and make them into a great nation. Number five, 
Moses begged the Lord to turn from his anger and spare the people because of his promise to Abraham. And number six, God showed mercy by not punishing the people as they deserved. So Moses' prayer saved the Israelites from death, but they were still in big trouble. Moses hurried down the mountain with the two stone tablets in his hand. And if y'all remember what's on those stone tablets, it's the Ten Commandments. Joshua, Moses' servant, was waiting for him. And when he, got, when he and Moses got close to camp, they could hear shouting. Joshua thought that there was a war going on in the camp, but Moses knew that it was people singing and feasting and worshiping the golden calf. So sure enough, it was as bad as God said. Moses saw the golden calf and saw the people dancing around it, and he was furious. How could the people sin and reject the Lord after all that he had just done for them? Moses threw down the stone tablets and broke them, and he burned the golden calf and ground it into powder. He sprinkled the powder into the water and made the people drink it. I think it's just good. <laughs> that was a good lesson, I think, for them to learn. So now we're going to read... Um, Exodus, still chapter 32, but we're going to read verses 21 through 24. And Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought such great sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord burn hot. You know the people, you know they are set on evil. For they said to me, Make us gods who shall go before us. And as for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So I said to them, let any who have gold take it off, and they gave it to me. And I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. So who did Aaron blame for the golden calf? In verse 22, he blamed the people, the Israelites. Did Aaron take responsibility for making the calf? No. He said that the people gave him the gold, he threw it in the fire, and the calf came out. So we know that Aaron's version of the story was not the whole truth. He blamed the people and made it sound like the gold formed itself into this calf. So how can we find out what he actually did to it? In verse 4, he's, um, we found out that he received the gold from the hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. So he used that graving tool. It didn't just magically do this in the fire. So we might think that it was awfully silly of Aaron to blame the people and say that the calf made itself. But most of us do the same thing Aaron did when he knew he'd sinned. He blamed someone else or he twists the truth. And he didn't, um, sorry. Yeah, so he, bl he would blame other people or twist the truth. Aaron didn't want to take responsibility for his sin and confess it. He felt pressured by the people and he gave in and made an idol that they wanted. But, God, but he had the choice to say no, so he couldn't blame the people for what he had done. Moses went back up the mountain and confessed the people's sin to the Lord. But God said he would still have to punish them. So, Exodus 32, verse 35. The Lord sent a plague on the people because they had made the calf, the one that Aaron had made. So what did God send? A plague. So, and why did he send this punishment? Because they had sinned by making the calf. So the same plagues, which some of them did affect them before when they were still in Egypt, but others did not. Now they were having their own plague sent on them for the sins that they had committed. They were all guilty. All the people wanted an idol to worship, and Aaron made one. God showed mercy by not destroying the people for their sin, but he still punished them with a plague. So what attribute of God means that he is fair and must punish sin? That he is a just God. J-U-S-T. So the Israelites had learned a lot about God's faithfulness and omnipotence. He kept his promise to bring them out of slavery, slavery in Egypt by using powerful miracles. Now God had to show the Israelites that he was also just. He would punish their sin, but he was merciful to keep them as his people. He would still lead them to the land of Canaan, just like he had promised when he made his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we're going to finish up our class notes with number seven. <clears throat> Moses was so angry that he broke the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments written on them. Number eight, Aaron blamed the people for the golden calf. Number nine, Moses prayed and confessed the people's sins to the Lord. And lastly, number 10, God sent a plague to punish the people for their sin of idolatry. So the Israelites quickly turned away from the Lord while Moses was with God on Mount Sinai. They wanted an idol to worship. They broke God's commands to worship only him and not make a carved image or bow to it. 
God was ready to destroy the people because of their sin. But Moses begged God for mercy and confessed their sins to him. God listened to Moses' prayers. Because God is just, he sent a plague to punish the people, but because of his mercy, he didn't wipe them out. So did y'all know that we have someone speaking for us the same way that Moses spoke for the people? Can you guess who that would be? We're going to find out in 1 Timothy 2.5. So we're going to flip to almost the end of the Bible. To 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God, and there is one medi <clears throat> mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So who does this verse say is a mediator between God and men? Christ Jesus. A mediator is someone who comes in between two people to settle a problem. Jesus Christ is the only one who can bring peace between God and sinners because God is holy and we are not. Jesus gave his own life for sinners, and because of his sacrifice on the cross, we can come to faith through Jesus. Just as Moses loved the Israelites and didn't want to see them destroyed, Jesus loved all of us so much that he died on the cross and rose again so we would not have to be punished forever in hell. God shows mercy to those who confess their sins and turn to Jesus by putting their trust in him to save them. So I thank you guys for all listening. And like I said, bring these little notes back, which you'll find online, and your activity sheet, and you can get some extra treats. And we're going to close with a prayer. Father God, I just ask you to be with all the sick in our world today. I ask you to be with all the ones who are watching from church, watching church from home today, that you will bless them. Father, I ask that you will guide us and help us take this lesson to heart and that we will find the idols in our lives and destroy them and use this time away from school and our usual lives to focus on you. In your holy name we pray. Amen.